Hi, I'm Alex Ferrari. Hi, I'm Terry Gamble. And we're here with Michael Rubenstone. There you go. Yeah. So first question, man. Yeah. I heard through the grapevine that it's taken you like 10 years to make this movie. Why in God's green earth and how in God's green earth have you lasted so long on one project? Um, well, it just, you know, I, you have certain things in your life that you feel like you need to finish mm -hmm. in order to move on with your life. That's kind of how I felt with this project. Was, can, and can you say the name of the project? Oh, yeah. It's uh, On the Sly in Search of the Family Stone. And it's premiering at? And it's premiering at Slam, uh, Dance. Slam Dance. Awesome. Yeah, congratulations. Congrats, um, man. Yeah, world premiere. Um, and uh, yeah, first time in Park City. And oh, so you, you're them. a newbie. This is awesome. This is awesome. Yeah. yeah. You having a good it's time? It's all new. Yeah. Did it already premiere? Or is it no, no, no. Our, uh, Sunday night. Sunday night? Sunday night, 9.30 um, in the ballroom. 9.45. 9.45. All right. 9.45. Get for the producer. Thank yes, you. thank you. <laughs> so, so you just stuck with it for, I mean. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, the, a, a documentary, documentary yeah. always right. takes time, period. Right. And, uh, you know, for me, it was, um, you know, years when I was trying one thing and trying another thing and trying this cut. And, you know, I was learning how to make a film mm -hmm. as I went, you know. Mm -hmm. I, Is I this did, your first film? This is my first film. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, it literally, it chronicles me just kind of picking up a camera mm -hmm. and trying to find Sly Stone. So it's your story as well as Sly's story, in, in a way. And in, in, in me sort of trying to find him, I ended up meeting so many people mm -hmm. involved in his life, band members, right. record people. Must have been uh, an, an incredible journey. Incredible journey. <laughs> but as I was meeting all these people, I was telling Sly's story. Right. I was learning so much about his journey and the story of the band. Um, so for a while, I was like, what am I doing in this movie? Yeah. I should tell the story of the band, yeah. this incredible band. Absolutely. Um, so but something was calling me to find a way to incorporate the two, in a way. Right. Um, and, um, and I feel like I, I did my best in, in pulling that off. I mean, with, with documentaries in general, you're right, it does take, it's a, lo it's a lot of times, pa a lot of passion, more than a lot of times a narrative. Yeah. And it takes years and years, but 10 is it 10, right? Well, it's actually more 12. 12. 12. Oh, so 12 okay. is, is definitely your endurance. You, you are a marathon runner without question no. yeah. <laughs> on this. The real question on that then is yeah. how many friends did you lose along the way yes. in this quest? How many girlfriends? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think that's more the question. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't say I, I lost friends. I, I more gained friends in, in, in making the film. Um, there are people that I met throughout the process of, of work, working on this film that just changed my life completely. Yeah. I mean, being thrust into the Sly and the Family Stone world mm -hmm. um, is quite a departure from my upbringing. In some ways, some ways not, but uh, it's a whole. It was a whole new world for me, and uh, some people are still with me today as mm -hmm. friends are just right here. So. So on a technical standpoint, over 12 years, technology changed. Oh, yeah. You're, so, you're going to see that in the movie. So I wanted to ask you, like, how <laughs> is that? film buffs. That, so yeah. how did you, what format did you start shooting with? What did you end with? Did you edit the same all the way through on the same plot, on the same software? Okay. So, yeah. So uh, <laughs> in terms of that, it started with a high 8 camera. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah, okay. high 8. Straight up. When I was Stand driving cross country, <laughs> sure, I sure. had my high 8. Wow. Um, but, uh, you know, the, it was predominantly mini DV. Okay. Um, I shot most of it on the Panasonic DVX100. Oh yeah, it's the, uh, the which workhorse is, of the, of the was you it, know was it the A or the B? It's or A. Was, it's just the workhorse. That was the workhorse. Uh, I mean, I have shot many, my first movie on it. It's yeah, a, it, was so, it was beautiful great little camera. camera. Great little camera. Yeah. Such a good camera. Perfect for documentaries. Yeah. Um, but I was working with an editor recently, and he was looking at the footage. He's like, "Oh, there's something about that Panasonic footage. It's just like it's it it's, reminds me of a time. Takes you right back <laughs> to that era. It was, right? it was, yeah, right. it was ten years ago. Yeah. It was like a little like like three, four, five year mo moment that that right. camera was, was everything. Was, was it, was, yeah. it was affordable, shotgun. It was the first 24, real 24 24P. It yeah, was the first exactly. real 24P that looked as like, filmic. It was better than the Canon XL. You got it. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. so, so I would say the majority of that. But uh, by the end of the film, we're shooting HD and, you know, shooting on a 5D and Right. Um, so you, you and definitely. So there's a lot of history we're getting. We're getting film history. We're right. getting your slice history, your history. Yeah. All and, you up combined. and you upresed all the stuff. Uh, right. I mean, obviously, to HD. So. Yes. Well, did it handle well? Um, you know, in terms of the, the technical stuff, it was kind of a nightmare, a logistical nightmare. <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 we had to put it through this something called a Tyranix. Yeah, Tyranix. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had to put it through that. So all the formats kind of were working together. But regardless, you're going to see uh, a variety Changing. of 
changes yeah. just based throughout the film as it progresses. I think a parallel is great. I've seen your film, a rough cut of your film, actually. Too. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, can't wait to see uh, the new cut. So, yeah, yeah, I can't wait to see the new cut, absolutely. And, and technology definitely has changed along the way, but I feel like it mirrors Lai's story a lot, too, because he went through so much technology change and everything, too. That's right. Were you inspired by that and making this? or? Gosh, I never really thought about it that way. But, yeah, you know, I think... Um, what Sly Stone did uh, as an engineer was fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he really was the first person to lay that down that drum track mm -hmm. with uh, what was called a rhythm king, right? Uh, the rhythm ace, and uh, and it's that beat, it's that yeah. uh, it's that click, you yeah. know. And they had all these weird, funky settings. And when he was at his most, one of his most creative periods, you know, he didn't have time to like call the drummer in, or he, you know, he just wanted to get it down, right? So push that button, you get a drum track, yeah. and you make a song. And uh, and that's the way everything's pretty much done these days. So he was a real uh, maverick in that in that aspect. So you're in Slam Dance now. Yeah. This is your first film festival. This is my first Everything. film festival. My so wow. did you, what was the experience? Like you just went out and submitted to a bunch of festivals, and Slam Dance was the first one? Slam Dance was the first, my first submission. Because you, you just felt and you that got in your day. first one. And we got, yeah. Uh, Congrats. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So that's we awesome. got in and um And you're like, now what? <laughs> what? Like you get in. Now what? Like, now I have to <laughs> now like oh, now I have shit. to make a real movie. Now so. you're like, oh shit. I gotta I gotta present a real movie. Now. Yeah. It's gonna be seen by real people. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um so that was interesting. And and really, um, you know, the film obviously I've done various cuts and um once it got real and we had a premiere <laughs> date in sight. I started looking at the film again, and I showed it to some people that I really trust and um, real storytellers. Mm -hmm. uh, and they just felt that structurally there could be a way to make both storylines more cohesive. Yeah. Um, I think that was one of the issues I had with the original cut mm -hmm. is you know, telling both stories in a way where you you don't take anything away from the other storyline. And they work in tandem. Mm -hmm. um, so we literally... Took the film from an hour forty-seven to eighty-two minutes. Oh, it was tight. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. I can't wait. And yeah, don't rub the mic. Kids. Sorry. No worries. Okay. Are you on sound? Oh, unreal. <laughs> <laughs> we throw saying? everybody in, man. Yeah, everyone's everybody. working today. Cool. Good. So over the twelve years, like obviously this was not paying your bills. How oh, did you not. keep? The lights on, food on your on the table over these twelve years while doing this passion. Uh, well, I'm an actor. Okay, uh, I, I came to LA to pursue uh, my career as an actor. Okay, and um, so and I do quite a bit of voiceover work. Okay, um, so I that, can tell. That's that has helped me. You have a great mm -hmm. voice. Oh, thank you. A <laughs> um, lot of voiceover in this film, mm -hmm. um, which is cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, voiceover work, and I, I'd been ten in bar for fifteen years. So you self-funded this project then? Yeah, pretty much. No crowdfunding, really. Did I never else? did. Yeah. I just recently did uh, um, a sort of crowdfunding. Uh, it was a 501c3 sure. mm -hmm. uh, uh, from the Heart Productions. Uh -huh. um, and they once once all these costs started coming in, like... There's, there's real costs. I post, I have, mm -hmm. I have oh, yeah. uh, color, I have everything. Oh, yeah. uh, so Deliverables, that's when I... DCP, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all that <laughs> stuff. So uh, once that became a reality, then I, I got this from the Heart involved, and they've been great. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Now, as far as the marketing is concerned, what are you doing to get the word out? Because obviously you can leverage the fan base of Sly, which is a massive fan base. So For sure. How are you, um, how are you doing with that? Um, well, you know, this whole film has been and continues to be grassroots. Okay. Uh, so, you know, there's a scene in the film when I'm running around the streets with Honk, if you love Sly and the Family Stone. Yes. Signs. Yes. So you probably see us on the streets of Park City. With those signs, uh, we got flyers. Um, so people who honk, mm -hmm. you know, we give them flyers and. So you're street teaming. Yeah. you're street teaming. Yeah, are you doing anything? Do it old on, school. Okay. Are you doing anything on social media? Are you doing anything? Oh online? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have a website, uh, www.onthesly.movie.com, and um, you know we have a Facebook page. Um, I think we have started. We have uh, Provoke Relations who started our. Uh, social media. Mm -hmm. um, my wife has actually been incredible with uh, some PR stuff. So you were able to land a You got married. During, you got married during this Within time. this time. Got married. She's all right. A, so they didn't all girl. leave you. They didn't all leave you, obviously. No, no. She saw through all. She came in kind of late in the game, so, <laughs> you know, wasn't so as So she saw an ending in sight then. Yeah, I think so. All right. Yeah. The, the ending definitely happened when we were together. 
together. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, she saw you know, the dollar signs from the big sales are going to come. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. She, well, she saw me. That's and awesome. The film yeah, is awesome. very much me. Uh, Your passion. And my passion and my heart and my soul. And, uh, and she believes in that. So That's uh, fantastic. Now, what kind of uh, plans do you have for distribution? Do you have a distribution plan? We have no distribution at the moment. Okay. Um, we really just locked picture uh, yesterday. Minutes ago? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, literally, the Blu-ray was, was just burned and is on its way to Park City as we speak. Um, nerve so, Yeah, I know. But we're, <laughs> we're playing tomorrow night, so I have a feeling we'll be okay. Yeah, it'll um, get here. But, uh, as long so, as another blizzard doesn't come through. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, look, this whole thing is is uh, a whirlwind and it's totally new and I'm just open to whatever comes my way. Mm-hmm. I'm not even thinking about a sale right now. I'm just thinking about sharing this movie with people. So yeah. is your big goal just to share it or if we could give you... Like I mean, a- look, I want to share it with the world. You know, that's All why right. I started making this film because I believe in this music. Mm-hmm. And Sly and the Family Stone were one of those bands that everybody kind of knows, but they are a monster band. Yeah. And yeah, they yeah. deserve just as much recognition as the Grateful Dead and the mm-hmm. Doors and, you know, all those bands from the 60s. Groundbreaking, yeah. You know, Woodstock, yeah. Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, mm-hmm. all these people who passed that got all this recognition, almost icon status uh, in the public eye, public image. You know, Sly never really got that. And right. he deserves it because his contributions are, I don't know. Now, there's been a lot of crazy, st- I mean, I've, I've heard of a few crazy stories that you went through making and trying to get hold of Sly. Are there any stories that you can share from the movie that will not ruin the movie? Um... I don't know. <laughs> it's like, now go know. see it. You really <laughs> got to see the they're film. All, they're all there. So we'll give you the Sophie's Choice the then. If there was an we option. Lost, we lost the light. Oh. Is that a bullet? Is that the magic bullet? Oh, the outlet doesn't work. I'm sorry. Sorry. Do you want to press do this? Yeah. Um, sure. Okay. Um, what, should, what, what, what should I say about, like, my... With my interactions with Sly. Sorry, like, white. Hi. 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 Yeah. We've heard much about you. Yes. <laughs> In terms of like my interactions with Sly, like, what is okay to do? I think, what is it? The knitting factory? Though? Yeah, without you guys ruining the movie. Yeah. about the knitting factory, you could, I mean, or also just, I think that's it. there were a lot of opportunities for us. That's already out there. I listed it. Okay. Oh, sure. <laughs> okay. So are there any, you know, really cool stories you can tell me? Because I heard it was a challenge to even get Sly. It's a, yeah. it, it was a, it was like chasing or find uh, in search of Sugar Man. Very similar. Yes. You have and to the, go look for him. So right. any, anything you could share? Um, well, you know, I think the film initially started with whatever happened to Sly Stone. Mm-hmm. And let's let's see if we can find him. Um, when I started filming in, um, he hadn't been seen in over a decade. Um, like seen. I'm sure people had seen him, but, I mean, like, but he was in a was deep a reclusion, yeah, and he was, hadn't put out any music, and he hadn't been seen no in public eye, anything, he hadn't played a show, nothing. Um, so, you know, one of my dreams was bringing him out of his shell, you know, out of reclusion mm-hmm. in some way, and getting him to hear his music again. Mm-hmm. Um, so in getting to know some of the family members, uh, specifically his sister, Vet, uh, who was in a tribute band right uh we became close and we sort of she called me one day and she said you need to book us a gig in la and i didn't know anything about booking gigs or anything like that oh but, my goodness. but I, I made a few calls mm-hmm. and before you knew it i had a gig book for them at the knitting factory all right heart in of hollywood, hollywood california yeah, yeah right there um and uh so i called her i said i got you a gig in la you know and i had two where weeks, were they where two were they? weeks they're, they're in the bay area okay uh we had two weeks to to promote the show um, and that's when you see me on the streets mm-hmm. you know, promoting the show yeah. in the film. And, um, uh, and August 15th, 2005 was the event and Sly Stone came, showed up. Showed up. Yeah. He shows up at the show. That's must be, that must be so, awesome. I mean, yeah. In the flesh to see him in the flesh yeah. like that. Was that the first time or you had, uh, that was, before? that was the first, Your first time sighting. I, that was my first Sly sighting. Oh my okay. God. Yeah. Wow. For this show that we, uh. 
you know, we, uh, That's we awesome. put together. So, I mean, you've been on, this is like an adventure and a half. Yeah. <laughs> you've been on the two. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, to see him come to his sister's show. Yeah. And his performed? niece was in the performed? band. And he performed. He did not perform. Okay, he no. Didn't. He just he, he, showed. He sat, he sat in the VIP area upstairs, mm -hmm. and he had his motorcycle helmet on the whole show. Well, that's very it sly. Was a silver kind of yeah. motorcycle oh. helmet. Yeah. And uh, he sat, and he, but to see him enjoying his music with his sister up there, mm -hmm. I mean, be able that's to amazing. have a hand in putting that together, that right. was, you know, really a beautiful night. Wow. Really, really special. So those are the gratifying moments. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So, what um, what advice do you have for any documentary filmmakers out there, starting to get in there, trying to break through, mm -hmm. trying to make that passion project? Because I mean, seriously, twelve years, I'm still blown away by twelve years of passion, yeah. commitment. You know, yeah. from DVX to HD. All that stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's like fascinating. You know, I would just say, whatever is calling you, whatever your muse is, whatever is speaking to you on a on an intellectual level, a spiritual level and you want to be able to share that with other people, just begin, just start, just pick up a camera mm -hmm. and, and, and start filming, yeah. you know, start asking people questions, you know, start setting up interviews, you know, start to root to, you know, the nerve of whatever this thing is. Mm -hmm. And don't worry about, you know, how big a commitment it's gonna be. Don't worry about how much money is involved. Don't worry about, you know, the people that will or won't help you. Just grab a camera and get out on the road and just do it. Right. And before you know it, you may have a movie. You might not. I don't know. <laughs> you know for a while, I, I didn't know if Remains I was, to be seen. Uh, yeah, you yeah. right now. But honestly, I, you know, in terms of my, my uh, what I would leave with filmmakers, you know, I'm, I'll quote Sly Stone, mm -hmm. you can make it if you try. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for coming, right. man. We yeah, really appreciate it. Thanks for Thank having you. me. Yeah. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thanks.